G'day guys, you've got the two of us today. You've got John and Anthony for the hot end and today we're talking about the CR10 500. Thank you for that. <laughs> Okay, we're back. The CR10 500. Um, gee, I wonder what size it is. I'd say it's 500 by 500 by 500. And in anyone's language, that's a huge, huge build volume. Now, Anthony's been using this printer. I haven't had a, uh, a good go at this one yet. So uh, it's a CR10, so I'm assuming it's very similar to the other CR10s. Uh, yep, so it is just a scaled up version of the CR10S. It has the same filament runout sensor as the CR10S, and it has the same issues with the filament runout sensor as the CR10S. Which was a cheap, nasty, horrible switch inside, yeah? Yeah, so the switch inside there is pretty nasty. The issue I had with that is that every half an hour to an hour, it would just trip uh, trip an auto pause. Command. Filament run out. Filament run out, yeah. thinking that it was out of filament when it mm. actually wasn't. It was just the stupid switch was failing. So to overcome that, I gave up after about the eighth time in a row that it kept pausing for no reason and jammed a Allen wrench, Allen key, straight through the guts and that's mm. forcing it to be locked open. So now it thinks it's got filament all the time, even when it doesn't. Yep, so yeah, essentially just completely bypassed because using mm. that switch that they've put there, it is just terrible quality and not reliable. Right, what else did you find? I found that the rest of the printer is pretty much identical to the CR10S, the standard version, uh, sorry, the upgraded version. You've got your dual lead screws on both sides yep. and the much larger bed and frame. Mm. So it is mainly 2020 extrusion. Um, and the, obviously the biggest difference is the size of that massive bed. Yeah, you got a bit of 2040 here too. 2040 on the sides, 2020 yeah. on the yep. supports. Cool, bigger motors, beefier yep. belts, the whole, the, everything's bigger. Everything's bigger, mm. like us down under. <coughs> Yeah, it's um, bigger than Texas. <laughs> the only issue I had with the printer, I believe, was that the bed was a bit of a pain in the ass to level. It should have an auto leveling system on a printer of this size because regardless mm. of the printer or where it comes from, 500 by 500 of glass to get that perfectly level manually is a pain in the yeah. ass. Needs a probe of some sort. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the Wombot Modus, which is of a similar size, I think it was 400 by 400, a little bit smaller. Uh, the, even that had the BL Touch, yep. which I think this would benefit from. Certainly. But uh, you can put it on later, yeah? Yeah, you can just, like with any printer, you can modify mm. them and do what you like. Um, but yeah, considering this printer is around the 1000 to 1100 US mark, um, mm. that gives you plenty of wiggle room to upgrade it and make it your own. How would that compare to the something like the G Max? Um, well, most of the the size and dimensions of the G Max are fairly similar. Um, the print, the printer price, you're looking at three thousand US for a G Max. <laughs> yeah. um, but you got to weigh up what you want and what you're doing because if you're a hobbyist at home doing the odd thing and you can tinker and play, then it probably makes more sense just to buy the cheaper one. But if you're in an industrial or you're doing it for a business and you need the reliability, then you, it would make sense just to pay the extra to get something that's had decent quality control. Yep. Hasn't come across on a rickety old boat. <laughs> and um, and a uh, good backup behind it as well, no doubt. Good support, good yeah. backup. So yeah, there's not yeah. bagging G-Max or anything. You get what you pay for. That's why they're more expensive. This is why this is cheaper. Yeah. And, you, and the parts and like everything to do with the printer is, is put together for a price. That's um, right. The whole and, thing is designed to be yeah. as cheap as they can do That's it right. and still make a couple of bucks. Which makes it more fun because you can upgrade it and fiddle with it and play with it and not worry about stuffing a $3,000 printer. That's right. So yeah, as I did I mention it's <coughs> the dual lead screws on this one? Um, yes. 
Uh, it came with everything you see here. We haven't modified anything other than to bypass that filament extruder, which mm. sucked. And a little and a zip tie. Zip tie mm. to hold that cable out of the out of the way when it was printing. Okay. So the couple of prints I've got here were the first one is Kim Jong Il, the um, Rocket Man. Rocket Man. And by the way, Rocket Man should have been handled a long time ago. Um, yeah, the big fat doofus. So I stuck him on a Buddha with the big man boobs and uh, put a jester's hat on him because he is a clown. Yeah, there you go. So the point Hope he's not listening. I don't care if you are. <laughs> Hang on. No. I'll put my address in the description <laughs> below if you can build a rocket to actually get No, you. no, no. Cut. No. Seems right no one takes me Um, now what else have you printed? The point of this one was to show that you can still print your normal size prints and still get the quality of any of the other CR10s in a small print or a large print, mm. which is why we stepped it up a notch. And went for this. This is the Eiffel Tower. Wee mm. wee. Oui, oui. <laughs> Don't wee on me. Yeah, wee. Oui. Um, this was printed in uh, a Rarum Blue PLA over four or five days. Um, I printed it slow and Cold by the look of it. Yeah, so I printed this at 100, between 180, 185 degrees, which is very much on the bordering of too mm. cold. Yeah. But I did that because of the massive amount of retractions in the print. Um, as you can see, there was next to no stringing. There was a few little cobwebs in there, but that, you're going to get that on anything. I just gave it a, mm. a quick go with no, the hairdryer. Beautiful, dryer and, clean print. Yeah. Are you wanking the towel? Yes. Um, <laughs> That's so staining. No. It has a long, smooth shaft, complete with two balls. What is that? That looks just like an enormous wang. Uh, no, yeah. that, that's a really nice print. Like Considering I print PLA at, at around 200, 195, 200, um, that's come out really nice. Well, I found it any hotter, it was just stringing. Yeah. And as you see from the, the close-ups, the details in here, Mm. and underneath and everything. Yep. Very nice. It is a little bit crunchy because it's a little bit um, on the cool side, so yeah. Um, but anyway, nice. that, that is near mm. the maximum height that the printer can print. Mm. Uh, now hang on a sec. I know you. I reckon you've printed something bigger. I reckon I might have. What have you got? Oh. So <laughs> that is a, what well, started A rubbish off. bin. It started off to be my scraps bucket for yeah. this printer because every print would fail. Yeah. Um, but there's was... nothing in it. Oh, that's because we've got it tweaked. That's because it works now. So this one was uh, two or three days in vase mode. Uh, 200 grams of filament. And this is bordering on the maximum build volume that the printer can do. And as you can see that it's just simply huge. And vase yeah. mode. There's only one or two uh, layer separations, and that was probably from from me throwing it around. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. From putting it on my head like this. I am your father. Ah! <laughs> I think you could use it as a drum. Yeah, it's it's massive. It really is. I've never, I've never seen said. anything that big. That's yes. what she said. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Get rid of that. <laughs> okay. So we have a failed print bucket with no failed prints. That's a good sign. Yep. Um, overall, the printer is you get what you pay for. It is a good printer. You're not going to find much else for that size that it can produce. I didn't have any issues other than the runout sensor and getting the bed level. I suggest mm -hmm. that if you're going to do that, you're going to get one of these. And you might need to shim up little corners of the bed to get it just right uh, or at a a sensor of some sort, yeah. Auto level probe. Yeah, yeah, definitely would be a plus on this thing. I normally don't like them, as you know, but on something this big, I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, links to this will be in the description yeah. below if you're interested in picking one up. Like I said, they're around the 1000, 1100 mm. mark US. And full open source, of course. Is it? I believe so, yes. Full open source, according mm. to John. Yes, except the firmware. Yeah, the firmware is only a hex file. They don't give you yes. the full firmware to play with. Yeah. So I guess that's not really open source. Well, yes and no. 
If you uh, have a look at some of the Facebook groups around the place, you will find that some people have converted it to uh, normal open source files. Ah, oh, so they've ripped a normal so the, Marlin out and then yes. put in all the pro. Okay. put in the normal G code type, whatever it's called. I don't know. I'm not into no. all of that stuff. Yeah, so but, the, it sounds like in the Facebook groups, which I'll yeah. try and put links below. Yeah. Um, There's a really good CR10 Facebook group. So they've made their own firmware. Cool. Yes. Uh, alrighty, so I mean the basic features of the printer are the same as any of the other CR10 lineup. You've got your heated bed, 500 by 500. It's a Bowden or Bowden, Bowden extruder. So your extruder motor is off the side, pushing through the Bowden tube out through your hot end. Uh, belts on the XY and dual lead screws on your Z. Z. Yep. The control box is off to the side. Mm. which is good, but I think they should upgrade the connectors to something a bit more substantial yeah. because the amount of power that this bed draws, it needs bigger, beefier cables. I think so too, yeah. And it, you need a big bench to put it on, let's face it, it's a big printer. Yeah. It's a big boy. It is a big boy. Mm. But yeah, if you're in the market, links will be in the description. Hit the like button on this video, it would be greatly appreciated. If you didn't like it, then... <laughs> Tell us why. Oh well. Um, we can only do what we can do. We've got a pretty new set. We've got pretty new lights. We've got pretty new microphone. Mm. Comment, please. We need to know what you guys want. Yes, we need to get the conversation started. What do you like about it? If you've got one, is there any issues? How do you like it? What have you printed? Mm. Do you need help with it? Let us know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks. Right. Don't forget to hit us up on Patreon too. I like money. Mm. Me too.